Greetings, fellow simulators of train stuffs. Welcome to another Train Simulator Classic video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Southern Railway Retro Pack 01. And I'm going to try and be a little bit more quiet because we recently got a new puppy and he hates being in his crate as all puppies do. So I'm trying to, trying to keep him on the chill side while I do this. Anyway, Retro Pack 01, which could only mean... Of course, there's going to be other retro packs down the road. And it, of course, is from High Iron Simulations, which doesn't mean it's from High Iron. It's actually a collection of guys now, just to reiterate, for the 50th time. Uh, and it really has nothing to do with the main guy that created High Iron Simulations. He just kind of orchestrated it all and has a tight fist up dovetails butt of uh, partnership. So they kind of get stuff pushed out pretty quick and... You know, they get their articles and all that fun stuff. So, and not to mention getting stuff pushed through Q&A. So this thing is 25 freaking dollars for a bunch of freeware with new skins, essentially. Sure, a lot would argue, hey, we never had the GP18 before. We've never had the GP35 in the Savannah and Atlanta livery. The point is the very small amount of work that's gone in to those things does not constitute the $25.99, so sorry, $24.99, 25 bucks rounded, plus tax, give or take, wherever, you know, your location is. So it's basically the GP9, and we're gonna take a look at that. Anyway, it's gonna come with a GP9, GP35, uh, SD40-2, and a bunch of repainted rolling stock that we have gotten over the years from the very same group. It's basically, we'll call it Grayscale Retro Pack 050. And you're gonna get 10 scenarios, so you got that too. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. Welcome to Spartanburg, South Kakalaki. We're in Spartanburg, uh, Spartanburg Yard, which is the, uh, the CSX crossovers just down the road there. Um, this is, of course, on the Saluda, or uh, Asheville to Spartanburg line, which came out uh, several months ago, and it's actually pretty decent. I enjoy it, but I only enjoy it because I use other stock, not the stock that came with the route. So much to say or or these retro packs either they're they're just kind of there uh they're available um you know some people might enjoy them that's totally fine so this is what all you're going to get with this pack which again is 25 dollar which i'm not sure what that's all about oh and there's uh there's no real manual i'd like to point out so i mean there kind of is a manual but it's not a manual it's basically a manual telling you how to Prototypically operate a GP35 with advanced braking systems and the GP18 and SD40-2. It's uh, it's very condensed and kind of a pointless manual. I figured there'd be maybe some history about the Southern and its subsidiaries, which are Central Georgia, Savannah, Atlanta, so on and so forth. There's a couple in Alabama as well, uh, but it doesn't, and it doesn't tell you what any of this stuff, like who it's from, who the modelers were, any of that crap. Nothing. So it's uh, it's kind of funny. So, right to left, we shall begin. This is the GP18 in central of Georgia, which is basically just a GP9 with different uh, grills or louvers, if you will. We'll go over all that in just a minute. We're going to do some comparisons with other stock within Train Some Classic. Uh, this one over here is the Southern. Uh, and then this right here is the GP35, which already came with the Saluda grade root add-on. Um, so that one's Central of Georgia, GP35. This one's Savannah and Atlanta. And this over here is the Southern variant, again, GP35. But uh, look at the two. Like right off the bat, you can see some massive differences there. <laughs> Look at the front. Look at the plates. Look at the look at the paint. Wow. Much wow. Um, and then we have the EMD SD40-2 again with its comically large uh, front plate or plow, if you will, and the Southern livery with a very horrendous decal 
I noticed that immediately. Oh my god. It's like some Lucky Charm shit. It's like St. Patrick's Day or something. I mean, that one looks halfway decent. And then look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so. And then the old venerable. This thing has probably been reused more than anything in Train Some Classic. Well, may maybe the Class 66, a.k.a. the Shed. Maybe that one, too. This is, of course, the EMD F7. You're going to get an F7A and F7B. All right, rolling right along to the pack. So with these high iron simulation packs, generally what you'll get is a collection of freeware slash very old rolling stock, which gets, I, I could say something about a, a $2 fish hook or, you know, and you guys do the math that kind of get what I'm saying. These things have been turned out, oh my, like, trying to keep it somewhat family friendly here so anyway these, these things have seen a lot of different packs a lot of different paints and they're still very very old and not much has changed as it would appear so they kind of grab a few that they always use in this it's it's kind of like a circus it's like a traveling circus that they use with all these cars different cars they'll they'll pick and choose for these retro packs anyway these are bulkhead flats obviously i have laid out for us everything you're going to get uh, barring the empty cars, of course. So I've just I've only got loaded here. It'd be kind of pointless to see the empties. So this is uh, what they called covered wood. It almost looks like a turned over old uh, John boat or something um, strapped down. And you know these these cars are pretty old. There's there's nothing really uh, you know new or shocking. I mean just look at the trucks, man. That's some old school stuff right there. Now, when it's freeware, it's totally fine. It's great for yard filler. And again, it was fine, you know, 13 years ago. But come on, guys. It's 2020. It's almost 2024. And we're still getting this stuff. And you're still supposed to pay for it. You don't have to. Of course, always vote with your wallet, as they say. Um... You know, the lettering and all that. Numbering, okay. Numbering always looks a bit sharper, obviously. And then that's just ultra blur. It's like 240p. It never really changes. We've got a weird kind of... Uh, almost like a, a shadow of something that's not there. On the end of that inner bulkhead. And it's not down there. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Um, that's interesting. Here we have processed wood... Some, uh, some like, you know, some fence posts, something like that. Um, we got some small pipe. This is my department. And then we, yeah, here, here we go. It's that weird, what in the hell, man? I've never noticed that before. This could very well be in some of this old stuff, because, like, I always like to reiterate with these packs, a lot of this is freeware, just with new paints. Or it's come in another pack, you know, from the past. Uh, and I mean, like, 7,000 years ago. And it's just repainted. Here's some large pipe, which is definitely not my department. Again, with the weird shadow. We got some pine trees in various arrangements. Medium logs. Medium logs again. Actually, these are large. And then, what are these? Large. The range. No, okay. So they're smaller in diameter, but they're medium. This is intense. Pulp wood. God, look at the gray, man. Look how gray that is. <laughs> what the hell? Dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sometimes I wonder if these guys that make this stuff... You know, if it was like one time... Coming at them so hard might seem a little unwarranted. Like, hey man, give them a chance. Calm down. But guys, let's be honest. They keep cranking this stuff out, man. Over and over and over and nothing ever really changes and it's a bit sad so i'm wondering if like you know these guys hardware that make this stuff i feel like they're using my mom's packard bell from like 1996 and that's why it looks like that i don't know i really don't know 
Uh, next up, we've got an assortment of 40-foot boxy boys. Again, these some um, bitches are very, very old. They've got the kind of photoreal textures. Uh, just very flat. Not much to it. The logos look okay. The logos do look nice. They're just a little, uh, a little low res in areas. It's just no real depth to it. I like to, you know, I'm, I'm not super astute, but I know when something looks good. But as far as, you know, technicality, I, I don't know the phrases and terms and all that crap. It does have the, uh, the barcode deal. Again, we'll just peek at the trucks here. Old. Look at them things. It's like these were used before Moses existed. Anyway, so that's one of them. Here's another one with the green dot. Gives a green light to innovations. Southern serves the south. Another one there. I, I'm dreading getting further down there because what's making that sound is that GP35. It sounds it sounds like an electronic chainsaw to me. That the sound of that thing drives me bonkers. And it's it's kinda it's kinda set me off just sitting here listening to it in the background. Let's continue. Sorry guys. Savannah and Atlanta. Again, you know, the lettering looks good. This is fantastic for yard filler, but we need some better models, guys. Not only these things look like they're riding high as hell. Like four by fours. These are very, very, very old models, kind of, you know, and not, not to be mean to any of the creators, but you know who you are, and you know what you've been doing for over a decade now, okay? So let's, let's be honest with ourselves here. A little better model. Hell, even this model with much, much better texturing and weathering and color would do it so much more service. Another Savannah and Atlanta. Lots of brown. There's like, none of these are just, there's no color, man. I, I hate things that are oversaturated, but this has like 0. .000069 saturation. It is uh, very, it's almost like when you got your contrast all jacked up. It's kind of what it looks like. They've got those old school, like, deep black shadows underneath. Looks like molasses or something syrup Norfolk and Western uh, I'm guessing that's supposed to be black Norfolk and Western again the N and dub again nickel plate road that's kind of random but it's in there <sighs> we've seen these guys right the old green and gray and red boy I tell you what man these show up in like every retro pack I I can't name them all you know I'm, I'm bad with with short-term memory but I'm gonna take a stab and I I'm gonna almost guarantee my left testicles that these were in the the Boston and Albany route or the or the uh, what was it New York Central retro pack for that Boston Albany route I've seen these things so many times but wait they're brand new you know why because they added the southern barcode here put your face on it see that's new that's new that's new numbers might be new too Moving on. Central of Georgia and Central of Georgia. That's your 40 footers. Now I have to scream because of that GP35, even though I've got my system sound turned down and the recording sound turned down, but it's still super loud. I have my audio volume on 20. And I want to stick a pencil in my ear. Anyway, 50 footer, Norfolk and Western. Not going to get as many. Norfolk and Western, Savannah and Atlanta, Southern, and then Southern with a big bird door, and then another Southern. Moving right along over with y'all. Uh, cabooses. <laughs> Here we have the extremely chunk boy radio car. Look how wide that son bitch is. Look at that. We're going to compare all these, by the way, a little bit later, so stick around if you'd like. We're going to compare these with some other models and some other, well, freeware, essentially. You don't have to pay nothing. Of course, if you've got the stuff that the, the, the mods need, is the air slide. Now, to be fair, 
I love me some air slides, man. I think they look cool as hell. Uh, this is the uh, the smaller one. What was it a 40? Yeah, it's a 40 and a 50. But again, it's been this thing's been reused. It's been tricked out like a trying to remain family friendly. Um, so you get one of those, and then you're gonna get uh, some of the duels because these are single. You got the little dealy under here, and then these are dual. Kind of like udders. Remind me of cow udders. These are the 50 footers. Man, I would love to see a new, you know, like model overall of some air slides. I think these are some of the coolest cars, in my measly opinion. Um, they're just cool old cars. You definitely don't really see them anymore, like ever. Uh, you're going to get a couple liveries of these green dot, and then some of the more modern. And then you've got your steel. Bay window caboose. Holy shit, these look bad. I, I don't think I need to really check it out any further. They, they just look like, like the material that they're made out of is so thin. It's like, it's like they're made out of a cardboard box. It's like little Billy's fort in the backyard with some freaking axles on the bottom. That's what it looks like. Let's get a new caboose, guys. I'll tell you what. Make a new caboose. Model a new caboose. Pretty please. With some new trucks. You know, some new axles, some new features. Some new couplers. And then repaint that son of a bitch to hell and back. Can we do that? Like, I... Sorry to sound so salty, but oh my god, look at this thing. Just admire its sheer non beauty for a moment. This gigantic purple coupler, the old air hoses. It's like a leather jacket I had when I was 12. And the colors, man. These are probably the worst looking things out of this pack thus far yet. God above. All right. So, I'm not really going to look at the F7 and the SD40-2 or the GP35 because, well... I pretty much did all that. If you've not seen any of the previous videos uh, and you'd like to check them out about some of High Iron Simulation's uh, recently released packs, namely, you know, Saluda, so on and so forth, those are all very recent in my lineup. Um, you know, so if you want to go and check those out, feel free. You can kind of see what's going on there. But, you know, just to keep it slim, I'm really only going to focus on GP18, and then we're going to look at some of the other stuff and kind of compare them one-to-one -one with what you can get with some people that actually use modern techniques versus this, you know, Stone Age, uh, you know, smashing a rock against another rock kind of creation, like a freaking caveman. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. All right now, so... We're not going to go full Wikipedia on everything here. A lot of you already know about all this stuff. And just for those that may not, we'll kind of briefly cover the GP18. So it's basically the GP9 with some slight differences, which we'll go over momentarily. But the four-axle diesel electric, uh, it was built in late 50s, like 1958, 1959 through the early 60s. They built about 400, roughly, well, a little over 400. Uh, in the U.S., and then, of course, abroad. Um, some went to, I believe, Mexico, South America, and then a couple other, I would say, like a country or two in the uh, the Mideast somewhere. Now, they were powered by the EMDs, you know, same old tried and true, uh, 567, the EMD 567. This was a D1, though, 16-cylinder, uh, generating about 1,800 horsepower, hence the EMD GP18. Very clever. Uh, it also had, of course, the uh, roots blower, like a lot of the uh, 567s. 
Now, the 18 replaced the GP9, and we'll, we'll compare them in just a moment. We'll get to it, guys. I got, got some stuff lined up here. Um, you know, this basically replaced that. Designed nearly identical uh, to the 7 and the 9, so GP7 and the 9. Uh, though they had they had some different metal grids on the vents on the long hood, which uh, we'll, we'll peek at here. Um, you know, the radiator shutter, so forth. Um, it's kind of like a wire on the 9 and the 7. And then with these, they went with like a more flattened kind of grid uh, pattern. So we'll, we'll look at it here and see if, you know, they got it in just a minute. This thing also had 50 more horsepower. So instead of 1750, um, it had 1800. I'm very good at math. Now, they could, of course, be customized, um, you know, by purchasing railroads uh, featuring high or low nose hoods, um, you know, dynamic brakes. Uh, one road purchased some with steam generators. Um, so, all things you could get from from the dealer. Uh, so, Central of Georgia, a eventual subsidiary of Southern, uh, bought eight of these. They were numbered 171 through 178 and they were later rostered with Southern under the very same numbers. Also, um, you know, it's kind of hard to peg down some of the intricacies of the GP18 because, you know, the subsidiary roads that had them, uh, you know, maybe when the roads received them when they were brand new versus when the Southern got them in their later years, you know, things change. Um, generally nothing large little 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 tiny details but um, you know some of them had the yellow step trim for example these have the white so like right here it would be yellow matching the handrail so on and so forth I believe that came a bit later in Southern's life um, oh one thing that I, I thought a lot of these predominantly had were the little shorty fuel tanks so it was essentially half of a fuel tank that should have ended uh, basically center and then ran forward and there was almost just a giant gap there uh, next to the sideways reservoirs there um, that that was actually pretty prominent with uh, you know the southern or the central um, GP18s neither one of these have that uh, which is kind of interesting there was also a box on the long hood that some units had which is right about here I think they were, I want to say they were like intake covers or something. Um, it's very strange looking. There's it it a box that sat about right here. So, of course, neither one of these models featured that. I think that's what it is. If you know, please let me know in the comments below. Um, certain things like that always uh, intrigue me. I thought it might have been, you know, something with a generator, but that typically would have been in the short news up front. Um, or the short hood, sorry. Uh, but where it is, you know, the, the dynamics would have been. So what's funny about this model is you could order these with dynamics, right? And if you were to run on Saluda, which is that way, to the west, you would 1,000 percentile in the diesel electric age need dynamics to run that son of a gun. These, in this pack, did not have those so again it looks kind of funky whereas uh like the gp9 would have that that hump here so yeah that's that's where the dynamic bits would be um what else sometimes you'd have bells on the nose so for example you'll see a lot of photos online of these with the bells hanging off the nose um these have the bell right here they did have bell behind the cap so it's again it's you know it's it's year differences and how they were ordered, uh, stuff like that. What else? Oh, some of them had high fan shrouds as well. So these have the kind of thinner fan shrouds. Um, the higher fan shrouds would be probably double that thickness. Um, so that's a variation as well. On these, I guess they went with the, the baffles, or I guess you could call them spark arresters, although that would be pretty rare. I would imagine. Um, so yeah, those would be exhaust baffles there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What else? What else? What else? Um, hmm. Some of them had flat fans as well. It might have been the ones that had the thicker shrouds. These are these are like the domed type. Um, 
yeah and the horns and bells would vary as well southern definitely like a particular style of horn um i'd also like to point out with this pack so it would appear that a lot of these horns were kind of given from some of you guys might know switch point simulations um that have made you know some of the really nice uh southern railway mods as of late um i guess they donated their horn models to dtm for these engines which you know dtm made these by and large um gosh i think everything here was was probably done by dtm except for the advanced air brakes it's just a, a script he copies and pastes just like everything he copies and pastes so the horn models may look decent because the guys at sps can do a pretty damn good you know notched up job of uh, some horn models so and that that being well and good of course but what's also gonna matter is whether they sound good got the big old trumpetos Oh, those GP35s sound horrendous. Yeah, so these are definitely not DTM models. But what's funny is since there's essentially like no manual for any of this stuff, um, you know, it doesn't really notate anything. It doesn't notate who the models are from, yada, yada, yada. Oh, the F7. Forgot about the F7. Oh, man. This thing's gone around the block a number of times. Uh, again... This is the F7, and uh, it's an F7. Wow, okay, I just took my uh, headphones off and realized the puppy, Doke, was uh, howling his ass off. And I couldn't hear him because of his GP35. Anyway, alright, so yeah, back to the F7. Um, visually, it looks okay. Uh, the gold actually looks pretty on point. Um, you know, that that's not too shabby. Uh, you know, the black is just ultra, ultra faded. Uh, a lot of these, I don't know if they had the dual bulbs there. I thought they were single for the most part. But again, over the years, they could change it. So, you know, they kind of get away with the stuff with uh, some of these, these retro packs. Uh, this is the SD40-2 with the horrendous logo. That looks so, so bad. Um, this plow looks terrible. Not really gonna go over that because the SD40-2 was in the Saluda uh, add-on, which was equally bad then. Uh, and then of course the GP35s, which I'm not really gonna go over. And then these. So, it's a GP9, basically. Now, where did he get this model from is interesting. I, I can't really figure it out, personally. So there was uh, RSC, Dovetail Games. Uh, I know Michael Stefan, a.k.a. Uh, Great Northerner, a.k.a. Golden Age of Railroading, which is the freeware site. It's got a lot of this stuff on it, just in different paints. Um, he made a GP9 as well, and a GP7, and a GP5, and an S SD9, and just SD7, and all kinds of other stuff. So. I don't think it's from that. It it may be new. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna guess not inherently and 100. percent I'm gonna say some bits and pieces maybe. Um, but the trucks do look a little bit different. I can tell that right off the bat. Of course, we're gonna do a comparison with some other stuff. We're just trying to breeze through this. Um, you know, the liveries look okay. The lettering looks okay. The yellow is nice, but this this what should be black is terrible. It's gray. Like, just just looking at this lot sitting here. Oh my god, man. It's literally gray. You know, it's called tuxedo. How many tuxedos are gray? You know, like the suit. I'm, sh I'm sure they're out there, but it's generally, you know, black and white. So, yeah. Anyway, GP18. We're going to start hopping in each one and tooting the horn, see what's changed. 
And then we're going to do some comparisons. So the first Central Georgia. Get in it. Not really going to look around right now because, like I said, we're going to do a comparison a little bit later. First test. Can't even hear the horn. That sounds like an M5? What the hell is that? Yeah, I'm not not totally sure. Okay, we'll get in that one. Same thing. Oh, I forgot the bell. It's that same old DTM bell, boys and girls. God, get a new bell sound, man. God. Damn. All right, GP35. There's that old terrible, terrible RS3 sound that DTM has been using forever. Guess what? That's a five chime, Brohim, not three. So that sounds terrible. We're getting this one. Still bad. Still a five chime with a three chime sound. We'll hop in this one. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, and let's get in the F7. I guess that's supposed to be... What in the hell is that? Oh, it is five. I think it's supposed to be an M5. Yeah, none of them sound good. Alrighty, guys, it's comparison time. So, on the right is the new, hashtag new, uh, GP18 from this retro pack, which again is basically GP9, GP7, uh, etc. Um, so, that's the one on the right. This one in the middle is the old RSC. Uh, GP9, which came in the GP9 pack, which came with like 20 or something. I think it was like 10 GP9 models. And then the one over here is the very old uh, GP9 from Golden Age of Railroading, which was a freeware. Now, it's cool that it's freeware. Don't get me wrong. And again, you know, it's very, 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 very old. Um, you know, so back then, okay, if I didn't have one in Southern, so I got the, the Heinz Ketchup Mobile. Um, yeah, so some differences. So I, I definitely don't think it's this one because I'll tell you what, man, the, the high iron retro packs, they have used this model here in the past in some things. I, I distinctly remember that. So I'm gonna, you know... I'm going to kind of think that it's like the RSC GP9 on the left because it's basically the same engine as I noted. Um, either that or he studied it and just kind of built off of it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not totally sure there. The trucks are definitely different. So on this old, old crap here, it's got those photo reel kind of textures. Uh, you can tell the axles look a little bit different. These have that ultra shiny white or chrome um, on the axles. <laughs> Look how they stick out. God almighty. Even RSC like, had it right. Look how much better those look, even as old as they are. And they got the black right. You know, So the black looks a lot better. The only thing that doesn't really um, fare on this is this highlighter yellow uh, here. Whereas here, you know, the, the gold or the yellow does look a bit a bit better so basically gp9 gp18 were the same thing uh visually externally barring a few things namely the venting so here you'll see it has kind of this this cross weaved or thatched what they call chicken wire on the venting and the ports and then on the 18 it did not. It just had like these thicker lines of metal. What, what are what are those called? Th thicker lines of metal. 
So they got that right, I guess. They do look weird because it does not have the dynamics. This model over here does have the dynamics, so that's what that would look like. Kind of a humpback deal, like a camel. Um, fans are a bit different. They still have that crap animation where it like resets. Hold on. There it goes. One more time. There it goes. Yep. Uh, and, and the venting doesn't look that good either. It's like paper thin. It's just not very good at all. So that's that. Um, the, the couplers are different. So these are the purple uh, DTM couplers. And these over here are the older ones. I think these look better. Um, from a like a texture like a color standpoint and they're not just they're just not ginormous the thing looks like it's swollen like it got stung by a bee or something um, and it's just so gray it's just so so gray got the blue windows so yeah this has got to be DTM that's it that's it just struck me so yeah this may be an old, old brand new model built off of something because it's got them damn blue windows that, that like aqua. It looks like you're looking at a fish tank. See, even RSC got that right. Look how much better those windows look. Not blue. Blue. A giant diamond plating. Um, I mean, it, it looks okay. A lot of things could be fixed. I feel like it's riding a bit high. Uh, some of the differences between where the bell's located, the shorty tanks, uh, you know, the fans, stuff like that. If we'd have had a variation in that, that would have been cool. Um, you know, the coupler is still the very ugh. and just the color overall does not look good. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in this one and have a look at see. Yeah, this is 100% DTM, this control stand. Oh my god, make the sound stop. Make it stop. Jesus Christ. That sound, dude. It's just very, very bland in here. It looks like a little attempt at depth was taken. Um, it kind of looks like liquid diarrhea all over the floor. Uh, still got that kind of green interior that's the hallmark of DTM. I think I think his colors are just messed up on his whatever he uses to make this stuff or something. Yeah, this control stand just is extremely flat. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, I will say at least it doesn't kind of blend into everything like some of his other stuff, where it's like uh, seeing the forest for the trees kind of thing. You know, um, back wall looks a little bit better, the fuse panels and all that. Um, you know, a little roughed up. That, that, you know, looks a little better. These gauges are still not very good at all. Um, got lights. Still using those horrible lights. Yeah, the, the texturing is just not good. You gotta start spending time on this stuff, man. No sound with the windows. Same old DTM sounds with the doors. Let's see if there's any weird cockamamie BS with the windows this time. Sadly not. Uh, none of these switches work. Double lights work? Oh my god. Wipers, gauge lights, class lights, number boards, and then headlights. We'll go ahead and pop that back off. And we'll have a look. Alright, so it looks like an attempt at the headlight color was made. It's still kind of got that, that greenish you know, but I'll I'll take it over that bright ass white uh, color. Uh, what I will not take is that stupid flare. You see that starburst thing going on there, right in the middle of the two lamps? Another DTM hallmark. Like, dude, stop copying and pasting all of your stuff. Make something new, just one time, please. Like all the way, all the way, all the way. Yeah, marker lights, they're red. You can't even tell. Um, you can't even, you really can't tell, but you can see like the redness being emitted around the unit itself, which looks a bit ridiculous. Try that horn again. Yeah, got that same bell. Da ding, 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 ding. 
All right, let's load it up. Now the wiper's going unrealistically. Let's go ahead and shut those back off. Thank you. Give it one nooch. All right, it's not fired up. Hold on. I turned it off. I'll try and get away from, from this stuff, see if there's any new sounds going on here. The fans don't seem dynamic. They kind of just seem to move whenever. Check out the views here. Get back over here. All right. Oh boy, listen to that flame squeal. Jesus. Another DTM Hallmark. Dude. He ought to change his name to copy and paste simulations because it's literally all the guy does. You know, it's kicking a dead horse. I get it. It may sound mean, but but when you look at this stuff and buy this stuff time and time again, and literally nothing ever changes. You know, you you might start to understand if you're new to the you know the community, so to speak, train some classic. So we'll go back outside again. And we'll start loading it up. Up, oh, didn't mean to do that. All right, local brake all the way. Put it in neutral. <clears throat> and now it's a five sixty seven. And yes, they kind of sound like that, right? But there's been an argument made about this time and time again uh, from some of these blue hairs. Uh, that's realistic. Like, okay, yes, it, it, it's what they kind of sound like, certainly. But let's get some new sounds. Let's let's use some new editing techniques. You know. A little, little bit more compression. Let's think some depth. Give it some nuts, you know? Back up and look at the exhaust again. It's just a, a mess of whatever that is. Purple. Burning the shit out of some oil. Yeah, it doesn't, um... It looks like it's too high to me. It's, it's odd. It's like, it's like all the equipment's been taken out of it. You know, the prime mover and all that. All right, so that's that. I mean, I guess call it new, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I, I'd be willing to bet that this whole damn thing is not brand new. There was stuff cherry picked from other models. Uh, possibly even the, the, the car body itself. Um, so who knows, you know. Trucks do look a bit better. I'll give them that. Um, as far as I can tell, I think everything's on there. It's, it's probably some of the better looking stuff with it. I mean, the unit itself looks okay. Like, the, the weathering, honestly, in some areas is not that bad. It's just too light because there's no black. It's just gray. Some of this, um, you know, wear technique on the edges is just too much. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. It looks like an old plate, you know, that a steak knife's been rubbing across for 50 years. Like, Jesus Christ, what has been rubbing on the top of this engine? It just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> it's just super weird, man. Like, it's a... I'm, I'm trying to find some some silver linings here. Um, you know, I, I guess, like I said, the model looks okay. Uh, I don't know about the, the parameters, and the diameters, and all that stuff. It, you know, it looks okay. It just seems a little too high. Some of the stuff looks 
crappy, too thin, um, bad patterning and texturing. The lights are still bad. It's, you know, I'd, I'd say it's like a 5 out of 10 um, as a whole. Sounds are still meh. The horns, meh. Reuse bell. Uh, yeah. That's that. And then these were the GP9s, which those were based on, which is why I had them there. Now, this over here, if you'd like to know more about this, I'm not going to go into that. But this is the radio receiver car. So this is like the early invention of distributed power, kind of. I did a video about this uh, on the right uh, a month ago, I think, recently. So if, if you'd like to know more about this, just you know, scroll down and check that out. So the one on the right here was by Switchpoint Simulations. And it is free. The only thing it requires is the jointed rail slash searchlight simulations uh, freight pack 02, I think, which again is free. So that some bitch right there, a hundred percent free, and it looks incredible. The coloring, the lettering, the vent size, the trucks, you know, the couplers, uh, you know, the aerials on top. It all looks smashing. I like it. I use this thing quite a bit. It looks cool and it's free. This thing came with this uh, retro pack and it does not look cool. Now again, an argument could be made about the colors and the type of box car because yes, the Southern did experiment with a couple of these uh, when they were using them to be fair. But that aside, the type of box car and the color, the rest of it, it's very much found wanting compared to this thing on the right. Again, it's just super, super flat. Even though it's brown, it's just, you know, there's no saturation there. There's no pop. There's no color. There's no, ooh, ah, refreshment. There's none of that. This has that. This does not. Um, the numbering and lettering look okay. Uh, I'd say this looks a lot more akin. I mean, that just pops, and the actual font and shape of the lettering and numbering look really, really good. The vents for the equipment that would have been inside of this thing, because that stuff did get hot, are massive. That's more akin to what they actually look like. Uh, different 1920s hand wheel, hand brake. Uh, it's got the giant DTM purple coupler. Um, granddad's leather jacket from the 1940s material on the air hose. Uh, yeah, and the trucks look bad, as do the axles. I mean, look at these some bitches. Woo! Let's look at them in the light. Yeah, look at the coloring on that, man. So yeah, thing on the right free. This thing right here, twenty-five dollars. Ah, F seven. So this thing has been reused like I really can't think of any kind of phrase to use that would not be YouTube friendly um, so again yeah just by example one of the many uses from high iron simulations from their Western Maryland pack f7 uh, while the paint looked okay it's just still a very very old f7 now there are some differences the horn of course the brow rails uh, that one goes fully across the headlight that one's got a single this one's got the dual um, you know some things did change number plates are a little bit different the air hose and that's actually tucked over here it is not um yeah i mean livery wise it looks this one looks okay i think this as old as it is this f7 uh you know ugh. it's just been chewed on and chewed on and chewed on but it's still too too light this looks a bit more normal because the texturing and the wear within the texturing isn't like insane you know it looks a lot more normal except for like some of that stuff which does not look very good you got this very horribly animated fans and uh yeah it's just very very gray we'll hop in it for a brief moment and see what's in there it's different probably not much Ooh, yeah all right doesn't look good back to you in the studio bob and last but certainly not least the old SD40-2 now this one in front of us was from a collab aka mashup 
between a couple of people released under Switchpoint simulations based on these searchlight simulations, uh, BNSF SD40-2. And this some bitch is... Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I do wish the trucks were a bit lighter and a bit more worn. But overall, you know, apples to apples, hundo, 100% right here. This bad boy's got it all. Again, I'm not going to go crazy about it because I did a whole video on this thing. So if you'd like to see this thing, just scroll down below in the videos. It should be one of the last five videos, I think. It's epic. Love it. And then we have this, which is just more grayscale uh, with the green logo. You know, the, the model itself is just like, Jesus, dude. I'll just look at them side by side. A little comparison. Sorry, guys. Having to rush this. I hear the pup barking up a storm. He probably needs to go tinky winky. The colors alone, dude, are just... And and this was uh, kit bashed, you know, the high nose. Because what this was built on was the, uh, the BNSF low nose, obviously. Because 99% of these nowadays are low nose. Uh, low short hood. Um, and this was kit bash for a high hood. That looks looks like it was released like that. That's a really, really well well done job. So that is again a free mod. Of course, barring you need the searchlight simulations SD forty dash two, but why wouldn't you want that? And if you say it's too technical, so help me God. Because it ain't. I've heard that excuse. And it makes me angry makes me very angry and then this is the one that's 25 dollars within this pack i think that's gonna do it for today guys thanks for watching hope you found it informative and uh you have been warned a lot of this stuff that's really really cool is free and this other stuff that's not is not take care see you next time bye